back with Irish Football Fan TV. We're back with our season previews. We're on to Waterford FC. I'm joined by Shane Murphy, who is the admin of the Waterford FC Facebook group, which is a very popular Facebook group. Shane calls it a community uh, where people come together and share stories and obviously uh, keep in touch with regards to Waterford. I think it's actually really ideal right now, time to be part of it if you're a Waterford fan and you don't know about it. Shane's going to tell us a little bit about it anyway. Shane, fire away. Yeah, right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Um, well, the that Facebook group, look, it was, uh, you know, we're all fans. I set that up uh, in 2010, so it was 11 years on the go now. It grew rapidly then in recent years when, um, when you know, when we were on a promotion push, we won the first division and then into the Premier Division. Uh, so there, but, you, you know, you have a, like, I'm strict on the membership, let's say. So uh, you you have to be from Waterford or have a connection of some sort to get into it. But at the same time, then there are like 5,000 people on it. And they're not turning up to a game every single week. But some people are spread across the world, different things like this. So you do get, you know, really good conversation. I find it really good when you get, um, like one of my favourite things is you might get with a lot of ex-players on it, a couple of hundred ex-players. And you'll get people chatting about matches going back as far as like the 50s, even the 40s at times people can. And what surprises me is these people, fans, can recall exactly what happened, who scored and everything, you know, from 60, 70 years ago at times. So it's a great it's a great facility just for people to uh, talk about this football, everything to do with the Blues. I actually find it really good. I'm not a Waterford fan, and I find it really good, even just for information and stuff Thanks. like that. And you do a great job yourself in terms of promoting it and actually promoting the club. So hats off to you. And uh, as soon as I kind of had the, the idea to do the Waterford preview, you were the man I go to. It took a little bit of time for us to kind of come, come around to doing it, but here we are now. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Um, well, look, I live and breathe it. a fan all my life and whatever. So um, things are, times are strange at the moment. But, you know, it's uh, in some ways, even though we can't get to the matches, it's in some ways it's even more important. I, I remember I felt like this time last year, um, uh, the first shutdown, I felt uh, fans really kind of, you know, you needed something. You know, people yeah. were so isolated from each other. And so we started doing things like, you know, having votes on team of the decade for the 90s the 2000s whatever you know these kind of things i just got conversation going and um the back in april of last year would have been the 40th anniversary of our last fai cup final win and i was fortunate actually brian gardner who scored the winning goal in that game against st pats he had sent me a dvd of all this fantastic behind the scenes footage somebody had uh, videoed uh, at the time and so nobody had ever really seen this and out it came, and we put it all up on the day, like, and went through the day and celebrate, you know, bit by bit, arriving at the at Daily Mount, all of that, the match as it went on, and celebrations back in Waterford, and it was just brilliant, you know, because you're in the middle of lockdown, and people needed something. Yeah, no, I would agree, because we did something similar, obviously, you know, uh, we, we actually did a the all-time 11 for Ireland, and we're looking yeah. back on all videos and stuff like that, so it is, it's something, you need a distraction considering the football is not there. Um, but let's talk about last season anyway. You know, mm. it, towards the end, it was a strong finish. But let's take just to yeah. the to the start of, of last season. There was that game against Pats. Um, yeah. I was at that game myself. And you, you beat Pats. Brian Murphy was unbelievable that night and uh, kept Pats out. But did you, you, you started quite, quite well. Were you kind of foreseeing a, you know, a good start to the season and thinking that you because you had a good squad and you were kind of looking ahead saying okay we're going to do well this year or what were your immediate thoughts at the start of the season right well i suppose do you know what i, I was surprised with that result mainly because we did have some good players but we were a little behind everybody else we kind of um which tends to happen at times in recent years we got the squad together later than everyone else um i know the plan from uh, pre-season friendlies at the time was to play three centre halves. Uh, it would have been Sam Bone, uh, Graham Cummins, and Robbie McCourt. Um, then that literally the week of the St Pat's game, uh, we managed to get two loanies in from Reading, two centre halves, Andre Burley, Akina Odomeo, and so 
they went in. We played four four two instead. Um, they literally people didn't know each other's names on the night. Some of the players. So yeah, Brian was outstanding that night in goal, and that was a bit of a surprise result. So yeah, I I would have had hopes last season for us to be kind of you know solid mid table. Um, but that was a real bonus to start off with that win. It was a big the look. That was very much against the odds, and um, the stats didn't. <laughs> the stats were very much in St. Pat's favour, and we pulled it off. Every now and again, you have to rob one. So, yeah, definitely. Because like even being at the game, I was I was watching, just going, "How have Pat's not scored?" I mean, but like in fairness to Murphy and goal, he was unbelievable, yeah. and uh, he kept up that trend throughout the whole year anyway. Yeah. But just uh, kind of fast forward to, I suppose, COVID and all the struggles and then getting back, what were your, what were your thoughts kind of coming back into it then? Were you thinking, you know, maybe the, the race for Europe is on or were you thinking, you know, I'd be happy with a mid-table finish? How were you thinking with, well, with, with that? I mean, part for literally for quite a, a long time during the lockdown, um, there were genuine fears that we wouldn't come back that Waterford wouldn't field a team for the rest of the season. There were severe problems between uh, furloughing players, different things like this. Uh, players didn't necessarily want to come back at first. So, yeah, and obviously, sorry, Al- Alan Reynolds left. We went through three managers over the course of the season. Alan Reynolds left at that point. Um, there was no manager. Franny Rocket brought the team back, and then John Sheridan came in and go for the rest of the uh, you know, by the time we restarted. So, look, it was so um, topsy-turvy that I suppose, I, you know, look, at that stage I would have been saying anything once we stay up, once we're, you know, if we get into mid-table, that's fine. Europe, I wouldn't have been thinking about it at that stage. So do you think in some ways that John Sheridan overachieved? Yeah, like, do you know... I know I do because the the very first game was against Shelburne. Um, I was at it. Yeah. Shells, yeah, like look, Shells had um, been back training before us. Uh, they had kind of a settled side. We were coming in with a new manager. We had new players came in. Like at that point, we had lost those Reading Lonies. We had lost Scott Allardyce, um, Graham Cummins, someone else, and then we brought in. Um, and again, this was very, you know, kind of last minute. Brought in Robbie Weir was a great player um, who Sheridan brought into midfield. He had worked with him before. A real solid pro who guided players around him. He brought in Curtis Byrne up front as well. Um, but, um, yeah, so, oh, sorry, Tomishi Sabawale, who was a, a local lad who's ex-Blues Academy, Blues under-19s, but had been away at different clubs. And he came back in in the summer as well. So uh, that was, it was his first little, game, wasn't it? That day, yeah, yeah, and um, it was a little thrown together. But again, we dug in, played really solid. It wasn't spectacular. Uh, I will say, I thought Shells badly underperformed that day. Now, to be honest, um, uh, given that they had more training and everything, and we got a win, and then we we're off to a good start, you know. So, um, like John only actually stayed until what it was like mid mid September. But um yeah, so we, we kind of we had seven wins over the course of the season and it was like two wins from Reynolds, two wins from Sheridan and three from Rocket Franny Rocket at the end. So uh very disjointed and yet somehow a really good season. Yeah, because we all know obviously the stuff with, with Sheridan and stuff and Vinnie Perth and all that kind of created uh, he, he, he had a bit of you could you couldn't really blame him for leaving at that point because you know his name had been so badly tarnished by that um that night. Do you know what I mean? From what yeah, was said was, and stuff like that, and people were saying yeah. it was a deflection from Finney Perth and stuff like that. I don't yeah. know if it ever came out in the end what was really said, but like I, I kind of look at him. He's obviously an Irish legend in terms of yeah. the national team and stuff like that. And then kind of came here, and a lot of people just really didn't like him after that because they took Finney Perth's word for yeah. it. Uh, I mean, I would look, I think John would uh, say it himself that he's a very old school manager, Uh, you know, very, you know, get a solid team together, wouldn't be fancy, 
um, and his approach would be, it wouldn't be like Jurgen Klopp will say, it would be very opposite to him. He would be very vocal. Uh, he would, you know, look, he'll, he'll give a player an earful, his own player an earful at times. Uh, some will like that, some won't. Um, but I think what he said on the night uh, to one of our players uh, was, um, I think Vinny probably, yeah, I do think, you know, the fact that they hadn't performed well. We played them twice that week, actually. We had played them uh, Dundalk earlier in the week. They had beaten us 1-0 in the, in the Cup. And then, <clears throat> then we were 2-0 up in the league game, so it wasn't going well for Dundalk. And they were on a bad run of results. They came back and got a two-all draw. So, I, you know, I think uh, emotions were high, we'll say, or something like that. And, um, yeah, it, it, I, I do think um, more was read into it than I think it was some of it was a fuss over nothing. But, uh, John, um, to be honest, like, he, when he left, it was he was offered the Wigan job, which... He would have always, I think, when he came over, um, I never got the impression that he was coming over for some long-term job for a few years. This was a case of the club didn't have a manager. He would have been, you know, he would have known uh, Lee Power, the owner, quite well. Came over kind of to do a favour, you know, bring them up, but on the promise that if, you know, a job, like, he lives over in Lancashire, so if a job came up in that area, he'd take it. So he, he took the Wigan job. Um, and at which point then you were on to a third manager. So like 18 games last season, three managers, and yet you come very, very close to getting into Europe. It was just mad. Uh, you know, any, any dealings I ever had with John, I have to say, he was he was very nice and courteous. Yeah. And, and um, I never had any issues with him. So I, I only ever take people really on how they treat you. And so as far yeah. as I'm concerned, he was a nice enough fella. And I don't really have anything bad to say about him. So yeah. like, um, I'm sure you're probably the same, considering you look at how, yeah. how strong Waterford actually finished, albeit he probably oh, yeah. wasn't there for that long. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at look at his international manager, Jack Charlton. Again, some people wouldn't have liked how Jack might approach things or what he and Jack would certainly give a player an earful. So, you know, that that's it. John, I'd say um, you know, six and a half days a week, mild mannered, put him on the sideline and he's vocal. So Yeah. Well just just in regards to last season, did you think yeah. it was gonna go the whole way down to the to the last day of the season and you know, I think there was there was talk of an ineligible player and stuff like that, and there was supposed to be some sort of legal case that you know it would have made maybe the case for oh, yeah. to get into Europe, and then it yeah. just didn't happen. No, I mean, like, look, uh, it was just results started going our way. Our results, we pulled off some great ones, but then you would have felt like uh, St. Pat's, Derry, teams that would have been m more favoured to get in the top four and get into Europe, uh, they were underperforming. Um, Sligo then, who had lost their first four games, was it before the break, uh, came on a charge and they eventually pipped us. But we went on a great run, really great season. Came in sixth in the end. Once it came to the final game of the season, we, we had beaten Dundalk the previous week, which is a great result. Um, then we went up to Finn Harps, always going to be tough. Uh, Harps were still battling against relegation. Um, now, as it happened, yeah, we, we lost 1-0. We, we hit the hit the post near the end, but as that happened, right in injury time, uh, had we drawn one all, we would have actually had a worse heartbreak a few minutes later because Sligo scored a second goal against Dundalk, and then that meant they would have qualified ahead of us anyway. Uh, but then there was, yeah, um, because of COVID, remember the games were moved from Sunday to the Monday, the last game of the season. Yeah, and some the sort of suspension, wasn't it? Yeah, Shane McElhenney was due a suspension for Finn Harps, which would have been in his next game. The club appealed saying, look, fans weren't too happy about it, let's say. Uh, but the, the club appealed uh, in the hope that... Um, yeah, but as uh, in the hope that the FAI would kind of uh, overturn it. But in the end, um, I think the, the appeal was ruled out as ineligible anyway, itself, like so. We just want to take a quick break to speak about our sponsors for this video and podcast, Team Feedpay. As you can see in the image there, 
some of the clubs that Team Fipe has acquired, Shamrock Rovers being the main one so far. Team Fipe is an easy to use online payment platform that covers management and administration, finance, club development, communication, governance and COVID track and trace. Club administrators save hours of time with Team Fipe, save time on administration and finance. You can quickly confirm, decline and record attendance at club sessions and events. With a new database created, parents and players register with the system which in turn creates and builds a player database for the club. Team groups can be easily set up for easy access to data. Real-time transaction updates. Team Fipe keeps club administrators or team managers updated on processed payments but also flags up incomplete transactions and automatically emails the payee to give notice of a future attempt. Team Fipe already works with over 1,000 leagues, clubs and academies and are growing all the time. Team Fipe is proud to be helping clubs across multiple sports. Team Fipe is free to use, it's free to install by all of their members. There are no hidden fees, there is no sign up fee, no annual fee and no monthly membership fee. The processing fee, Team Fipe charge a very modest fee for any financial transaction that they process similar to the bank or other credit card processor fees. Book your Zoom demo today at teamfeepay.com or call on plus 353 1526 7499. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I mean, we, to, to have done what we did last season was an amazing achievement, I think, given the circumstances of like, I know everybody faced COVID, but we really weren't sure if we were coming back. We went through three managers, we went through like, the team looked completely different from at the end of the season, from the start of the season. So it was, uh, look, it was, uh, you'd have to be happy with it in the end. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm just going to talk about this season then. And I have yeah. a list here from uh, Andrew Dempsey from the football blog spot. And he has all the transfers here. So I'm going to talk about the players that have left. There might be some that you can uh, add to this list, but there may not be as well. So Sam Bowen's gone to St. Pat's. Tyreek Wilson's gone to Bowes. Robbie McCourt's gone to Sligo. Ali Coote's gone to Bowes. Curtis Byrne has gone to Athlone. Maddie Smith's gone to St. Pat's. And Ty Groin has gone to Treaty United. So they're all the outs on that list yeah. there. How uh, how do you think you'll fare without some of them? Because some of them are really good players. Well, it's a, it's a completely new team again. There would have been others. Robbie Weir left and went to Crusaders, you know, so... Um, we're after we're after losing some good players. They kind of left. Um, that was kind of decided in November. I think it's of the current squad. It's eight are returning from last year, and they're all the kind of local fellas. The the two Murphys being veterans, and then half a dozen young local guys. Um, so it's a new it's a new squad altogether. It's actually hard to tell how we'll miss any particular player because it's so new. Uh, but there, there was quality, and you know, I mean, Tyree Wilson, excellent player. Matty Smith was fantastic for us last year, you know. So some good players gone. Yeah, Sam Bowen, I actually thought was really good for you. Yeah. I, do you know who I thought was really good for you as well? Robbie McCourt. Yeah. I don't yeah. didn't actually ever foresee him as a centre back. I thought he was more of exactly. a left back, and yeah. he was excellent. That game against Shells that you mentioned, him and Sam Bowen were yeah. brilliant that day. Yeah, he got a great block. Brilliant, I know, I know. But a great block in that game, like a goal-saving block. And no, Robbie was, uh, you know, a really good guy. And he's kind of, I, I think Sligo will be delighted to have him. Actually, any of those players, I think their clubs are going to be delighted to have him. And that's maybe the best compliment you can pay them. Yeah, I think Wilson was on par with probably being the left, best left-back last, last yeah, can't even say, best <laughs> left-back last season. And yeah. um you know, I think Bowes to get him really straight now because they were a little bit weak, uh, a little bit weak on the left hand side there. They were after getting him in there from views, which I thought really kind of really weakened just because I thought last season yeah. he was brilliant. Didn't he score a nice free kick against them? Yeah, the um, against Bowes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And he was very unlucky with another free kick against um, Sligo. Hit the underside of the bar. But uh, no, he's quality. That was some signing to get him from Man City in the first place. Um, yeah, and I thought, look, any club, I thought Rovers might look at him. Um, Dundalk had Dara Lee from Bowes, and Bowes, you know, obviously needed a kind of needed a left back eventually, but uh, he could go anywhere, he could go back to England. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you on that. But I'm going to talk about your uh, re signed players and then your transfers in. 
and then we'll talk about where you're going to finish uh, this season. Probably where you yeah. would like to finish and then where you think you'll finish. But we'll come to that yeah. in a sec. So, yeah. um, you got Brian Murphy, who you mentioned, and Daryl Murphy, whose birthday it is today. So, shout out to him. Correct. Happy birthday, yeah. Daryl. 38 today, I believe. Yeah, yeah, 38. And Brian will be 38 in a couple of months. So There you go. So, uh, <laughs> you got Shane Griffin, then you got John Martin, Alex Phelan, uh, Matthew O'Connor, Noel O'Keefe, Dara Power, and Tumnisi Subawale. I hope I said yeah. that right. Well, Tumnisi, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, Matthew actually, Matthew Connor was away and has come back, we'll say, because he was with Galway for a while last season. So, he, he I'm not counting him as re signing, even though he is back to the club. But okay, we're well, actually, that's the way it's written. Sorry. Right, we're. we're I'm really happy with our goalkeepers, put it that way, because, I mean, that's, I think that's quality. Brian Murphy with Matthew Connor to back him up, and it looks like Paul Martin, who's John's twin brother, will be the third keeper again. So, very good quality there. Um, and of those young, you know, the some of the others you mentioned, um, like we, Waterford won the under-19 league in 2019. Uh, and that same team had won the under 17s cup two years earlier and was a really really good team so some of those are coming through now some have gone to other clubs um you like probably wheelings up at ucd you have guys at cove at wexford but um some of the guys coming through there noel o'keefe uh dara power alex field these are really really quality players really good young guys so um yeah we're kind of like hoping to bring through those guys um, with the couple of older guys, the, the Murphys, the class of twenty one. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add to that. So the the transfers in that you've gotten uh, again, yeah. there may be some missing offices. You can let me know if there is. But we got Josh Collins from UCD. I think he's brother of Nathan Collins at Stoke. Correct. By the way. Yeah. 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 Uh, Oscar Brennan from Shells. Uh, Cameron Evans from Swansea on loan. Keen Kavanagh from Codenbeath. Uh, James Wade from Cardiff, Jamie Maskell from Bolton, Kyle Ferguson, Kat Lego, Mashigo from Bose, Prince Mutswungamu. Uh, you might be able to say <laughs> We're that calling him Prince. We're saying Prince. Oh. Prince. Uh, and the Jack Stafford. Uh, Adam O'Reilly is not on that list, but he is obviously on loan from Preston as well. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, four loanies, and they're crucial because I'd expect all four of those really, to be playing every week for us. Um, that's, Cameron Evans looks like he's going to be a real, a really good uh, signing. Uh, he's the guy, he was at Swansea. He played in their, he, he's played for uh, their first team in the FA Cup this year, um, back in January, like, um, did really well. And by reports over there, like all the senior players are really, really impressed with him. So he, he really is one that, Swansea you're looking at for the future. Very good centre half. Um, James Waite from Cardiff basically looks like Craig Bellamy so far, that type of player, and really does look like him. I know that might be an easy comparison, but it looks that way. Um, then Mascal is a left back from Bolton on loan, and Adam O'Reilly looks a quality player. I know the Irish under 21s are having a look at him. Uh, so he looks like a very qu good quality player from uh, coming up from Preston, obviously from Cork originally. Yeah, uh, I think. Sorry, oh, sorry go. yeah, you know, just of the others, um, the others come in from like really all over the place. Um, Keen Kavanagh was a St. Pat's uh, underage player, we'll say, and then went over to Hearts and then Cowden Beat, and now he's back over, back over with us. But um, he's 18 and looks like he looks like a, a rugby player. Like he he's um, he's built anyway for. It. Yeah, and uh, and then you've got Josh Collins, obviously, at UCD. Is he a centre-back as well? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, Evans will be... Evans looks like he'll be the number one centre-back. Uh, in pre-season, it's been Kyle Ferguson and Josh Collins have both, at times, played centre-back. Um, Ferguson is... Uh, he, he'd probably hate hearing it at this stage. He wants to make his own name, but he's the son of Barry Ferguson, who used to be... Uh, the Rangers, Barry Ferguson, not the Longford one. Um, so, yeah, who is a big, tall centre-back. But I'd imagine Collins will be inside uh, Evans. 
All right, man. You know, obviously you have a, a new manager, Kevin Cheedy. This is his first stint as manager. He has coached with yeah. Everton, as we spoke about off air. He, he was very highly rated at Everton in terms of bringing true players. A lot of the young players really enjoyed working with him. He worked in Saudi Arabia coaching as well. He had, you know, the bowel cancer. He survived that. And now he's back in management for the first time. And, you know, judging by the players that he's bought, he's obviously invested in a lot of youth and he thinks that he can coach them by the looks of things from the outside looking in. Yeah. You may have more info on that, but how do you think you will do this season under him and what have been the early signs of pre-season? Yeah, well, well, I think it's um, important to kind of say, I think they very much come as a package that Mike Newell came to. They came together. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah, you know, so, well, it's like Kevin is the manager, Mike is assistant manager, but, you know, that's a partnership that go together. They've worked together in Saudi Arabia. Um, and It's like Mick McCarthy and Terry Connor. It is, it is. They, they'll go together wherever. And where Kevin Sheedy, yes, technically it's his first job as a first team manager, having uh, been a youth coach for years and an assistant coach. But Mike Newell has obviously plenty of managerial experience. Really great job with Luton. And he was with Grimsby, Hartlepool, uh, assistant manager at Wrexham. So um, between them, yeah, I, you know, I will, there obviously is a focus on youth. That's a very young squad. Um, and they will be looking to bring through between those local guys, as I said, and some of the loanees, they're all young as well. So um, you need, you, you know, we'll, we, we'll definitely want a fit Daryl Murphy and Brian Murphy then as well to, to help guide them as well. So um, I, how would I expect us to do? <clears throat> because, again, and maybe, I'm, maybe I'm pessimistic. Because as I said, last season I would have taken a solid mid-table and we were so close to Europe in the end. Um, give me eight today and I'll bite your hand off for it. Um, I think we're going to be in a bit of a battle because partly because I do think other clubs have improved greatly. Those teams that I said underperformed last year, at Derry, I think those come on a lot. I think Ben Harps are going to be stronger. I think Drogheda look very strong. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be a battle. Um, we need a few things to go our way fitness-wise, you know, but... Um, where do I think, where do I, like, obviously, as high as possible, but give me eight. But just just in, in what you said there, do you not think that you could maybe strengthen, like, see how he's get on to the summer, and then you might be able to bring in a couple of players then, and I think that might help you. Yeah, yeah, no, and in fairness, that's, I have been saying that, I think that's crucial. Um, I'd like to see us, you know, look, recruitment was difficult this year. It was, you know, we only really started after Christmas. Um, it was difficult. One of the things was we would have been hopeful that with uh, Kevin and Mike's connections that we'd be able to bring in more players from uh, the UK. But that's really difficult at the moment because of COVID. Like People don't necessarily want to move country, um, leave their families and things like that. So it has been difficult. So, um, But I would be more hopeful that come the summer, we'd be able to pick up a few good signings. So uh, keep keep on the level until then. And then, yeah, if we if we can strengthen, then, you know, see where we can go. Yeah, because you know yourself from last season, how quickly a couple of good results can, yeah. can, you know, go your way. And before you know it, you're in the race for Europe. Look at Sligo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, look, if I had my way, I'd love to see, and I think Kevin and Mike would say the same, I'd love to see just a couple of players down the spine of the team with a little more experience to bring the best out of some of the younger players. Um, also, after have to cross our fingers that, like, those, you know, some of the, the senior pros and that stay fit. Yeah, obviously for for that leadership and so on. But yeah, no, I think I think you know you're realistic at the same time as you know. You know, I always say it's nice to kind of get that the the heart where you think or where you would love to finish, and the head where you actually think you'll finish. And it's kind of everyone who's given their kind of their head opinion, as in my opinion, hasn't been in any way delusional. It's been very realistic. Yeah. Um. So I think what you said is is totally realistic, and you know you're not away, you're not away with the fairies in, in terms of your reality <laughs> of of where the squad is at. You know. 
Yeah, well, I mean, look, the one I've been saying, obviously, we were, you know, with fans, we're talking about it all the time. And I've kind of been saying I wouldn't like to predict beyond the mid season break, the first 18 games. We'll be losing a few players at that stage. So we will be revamping the team at that stage anyway. Um, so keeping the mix up until mid season and then see. Because, look, I've learned over the last few years, same again last year, we sometimes have had a completely different team with the first half of the season to the second half of the season. So I can't predict beyond mid-season, but first half of the season, yeah, if we stay in seventh, eighth, I'd be quite happy. Yeah, well, I think it's key to kind of beat the teams that are around. The Longfords, the Drogheda's, the Finn Harps, and, and yeah. th- those are going to be the results that probably bring you to, to around that kind of mark. But Shane, and also I just want to say a huge thanks for, for coming on and, and giving your two cents about the Blues. I know you love talking about them and stuff like that. So. I talk about very little else, Paul, so that's what we do. Uh, can't wait for it to get going. And uh, yeah, draw it away on Friday, hopefully get a result. Absolutely. Well, listen, I uh, just want to say uh, thanks again. And anyone who's watching, don't forget to give this video a like. If you're from Waterford or a League of Ireland fan, check out the Waterford FC group on Facebook. It's really good and it's always got stuff going on. It's not very, you know, slow. There is always something happening in the group, whether it's news, especially with the season coming back and stuff like that. It's really, really good. So check it out and uh, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe. We'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.